like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, it'd be really helpful if you would uh, hit subscribe. That's the number one thing you can do to support this channel is hit that subscribe button. So, this video is uh, a little different than anything I've done before. It's kind of like the last video, only not. Uh, I'm going to show you all what I used to do at the local, at one of the local little park ponds when I was a kid and this is really you know between the panfish fishing and this what I'm about to show you this is really uh, how I got into fishing in the first place you know when I was a kid you know I could only go where my parents would take me and it was basically Smithville Lake or the park you know this particular park pond is stocked with channel cats and that's what I'm fishing for and uh, I always used baits from the grocery store. When I was a kid, I would literally use whatever was in the fridge. Ham, bologna, pepperoni, salami, bacon, whatever. I didn't care. Just anything to throw on the hook, you know. And all that stuff works. In this video, I, I tried out two different baits. I used chicken livers and I used just like a piece of chicken leg because I've seen a lot of people using chicken online and say it's good. And the chicken leg did get get bites and kind of got pecked a little bit but the successful catches were pretty much all on chicken liver so yeah I hate chicken liver though um, I've kind of obviously as you've seen in previous videos I don't really use it anymore I definitely prefer cut bait and cut bait is the way to go if you're looking to catch bigger fish just plain and simple the small ones will eat pretty much anything the big ones they get more and more picky the older they get and the bigger ones pretty much just want to eat fish or crawfish or whatever they r regularly feed on in whatever body of water you happen to be fishing but this video we're getting little chicken livers out and uh, we limit out so uh, stick around show you what we do and then um, we're gonna do a catch and cook so yeah First catch of the day. Not what we like to see, but at least he wasn't really hooked and we were able to get him off. Okay, so he's a glizzy gobbler and uh, that's about it. Alright guys, we're on our first fish. Been here a little while. This is the grocery store bait challenge. Had the old chicken liver out. See what we got. And it is a tiny channel cat. He pretty much swallowed that hook, so we're gonna go ahead and throw it back. But uh first catch on the grocery store bait, tiny channel cat, he's on a chicken liver. See if his big brother's in here. He's on. I don't think he's all that big. He's another Another tiny bud, kind of sucks, wish we could get in some bigger ones, but well, here's what it is. He swallowed it too. See, a little tiny dude. Alright guys, got another one on here. Seems like he's a little bit better. Well, yeah. Well, got another one. He's a little bit bigger. We might go ahead and fillet this guy. He'll be good. He's gill hooked and bleeding anyway, so I think we're gonna go ahead, throw him on the stringer. Not too bad. This is about the size I like to eat. A little bit bigger than this would be nice, but he's still uh, still small enough. He'll taste good. All right, so the setup I figured out that's actually working is about as simple as it can be. I've got my super shitty Walmart special $10 combo. Berkeley Trilene, big game, eight pound mono. And then check this out. I just got a little bait holder hook. 
little it's a little quarter round tag plate no nothing else and then they're kind of eating the chicken legs but i'm not catching any on the chicken meat it's really just the uh livers that's actually doing anything so i'm gonna keep doing that hopefully we can get some bigger ones out of here and what I do to help keep the liver on, that's about as much as you need on a hook this size. I think this is about a number two or a number one bait holder. Kind of just ruined that whole thing there. Eh, not really. That should be fine. And then what I'm doing once I got my bait on there, taking the same rubber bands that I use as a bobber stop, and I'm wrapping it around this bait a few times just because this liver will catch fish but it'll come off pretty the, the bait itself comes off the hook pretty easy and that rubber band helps keep it on so that's something else i've been doing uh i do have some heavier poles with me because well i remember the catfish in here being bigger it's been maybe 10 years since i fished this pond but i used to fish it all the time when I was a kid, it was basically, this is the spot I learned to catch catfish at, so figured it'd be cool to show you guys. But yeah, I'm just casting it out, letting it hit the bottom, and uh, yeah, it, it hasn't been long before something grabbed it. It's right in that perfect time of day for catfish, right in the, right as the sun's going down. Well, this one felt big, but what is going on here? <laughs> Check that out. I snagged a bluegill. Ugh, this is the grocery store challenge, but he might wind up. Eh. I thought about using him for cut bait, but we're not. <laughs> I thought he was big, but it was just because he was hooked in the side, he felt a little bit bigger, but nope, just a bluegill. Got another fish. It ain't very big, but I think it is a catfish. Oh, yep. Another channel cat. Just a little guy. But, seems like that's all that's in here. I remember when I was a kid catching them. I guess they could have been this size, but it seemed like they were all in the two to three pound range. Pound, pound and a half, two pounds. These ones are all binks, so I don't know. This is a pond that is regularly stocked by the Missouri Conservation Department, so maybe these are just like this year's stockings. I don't know, but in the past they were a lot bigger, so anyway i can get a little nugget off of this guy since that's all we're catching we'll go ahead and throw him on the string here plus these little ones this size <laughs> taste way better so oh there's one that one seems a little bit better well it did well no it did Yeah, he's about the same. So I did, I did switch to about an eighth ounce jig head. Switch to an eighth ounce jig head and, uh, well, I was able to set the hook in that one without, without him swallowing it. So maybe the jig head's the play. But I had about a three eighths ounce walleye jig head earlier and i think it was just a little too big so anyway like i said these are all pretty small but i think the small channel cats taste better and uh this is a stalker lake anyway so it's not like we're depleting anything so it's not a pay lake i just know that conservation stocks it so anyway let's uh keep on fishing I think I'm only gonna stay a little while longer it's almost dark but 
I would like to catch at least one halfway decent sized one. We'll see what happens. I've pretty much given up on my heavy rods at this point. You know, this pond is pretty heavily fished. And I'm sure there has to be some bigger channel cats in here because I know this that this pond's been here for years, as long as I've been around. And I know they've been stocking it with channel cats for years. And uh, like I said, I know there's bigger ones in here, but probably too smart to try to eat a piece of chicken liver. They probably all uh, probably all been caught 200 times. There we go. Ooh. That one felt bigger, but I don't think he is now. All right, well, there's another tiny little channel. This one's pretty scrawny. We're going to go ahead and let him go get a better one for our limit limit of catfish is four here which is less than normal but with this place being so heavily fished I'm not surprised I think most lakes in Missouri you get like 10 or 15 or something like that I don't know I pretty much never limit out on them anywhere except here but uh, yeah let's get him back so yeah Little jig head. This is a, uh, I think, Arky brand. I'm not sure. It's a Walmart special, but it's this little bit more expensive, a little bit better Walmart special. I cheap out on a lot of stuff like rods and reels, just because I don't have a ton of money to play with here, and uh, you know, you got to work with what you got. But do like to make sure I get nice hooks and nice lines and then pretty much <laughs> I can work with a crappy rod and reel as long as it works but yeah right at sundown like this is when the catfish become most active now and I think they bite pretty good now and then it drops off and they'll bite all night and all day but is better this you know right at sundown I think or in the middle of the night just depends on the night too I'm not sure how deep the water is out there I don't think it's all that deep I know that the shallow end is to my right and the dam is to my left but I don't know how deep this lake is. They don't let boats or kayaks or anything like that out here. This is just a public city park. And I ain't even, since it's so dark now, I'm not even bothering with the rubber band anymore. It's actually staying on this jig head way better than it stayed on all my other hooks. So we're just gently slinging it out there this is going to be a quick fish i can already tell when i was a young adult 19 20 years old i worked overnight there's a fedex down the street from here a few miles a sh shipping place i loaded trucks and i worked overnights and i'd come here at like I'd get off work at like 6 in the morning and stop by here on my way home and I'd always catch them in the morning too so seems like late nights and early mornings are really the uh, play if you want to catch channel cats or really any catfish or fish in general in the summertime. Gets hard during the day when it's hot. Got one on here. Seems a little bit bigger. Probably not but it seems like it. Yeah, here we go.
I don't know how well you can see, it's getting pretty dark, but that's about the size I remember catching here more often. He's, uh, let's compare him to the rest we got. I mean, he's quite a bit bigger than these ones, but that's our four, so I'm going to go ahead and get back. All right, so this channel cat right here, he's probably about a pound. This is about the average size fish you would buy at, say, the grocery store. If they have channel cat fillets or whatever, they're about this size when they harvest them from the, uh, from the hatchery. Um... I think this is probably one of the bigger stalkers they put in this year, or he's been in the pond for a while. See, one of the problems, one of the things I was doing wrong today is I brought way heavier gear, way too heavy a gear for the size of fish in that pond. I'm now used to fishing for bigger channel cats and, and you know, river fish and all that. So I have a lot of heavy stuff and I forgot how small these are. I'm glad I at least brought a, kind of a lighter pole because they all came on a light pole but uh yeah this is about the average this is what i like to see in the eater size catfish you know you can eat bigger ones like i did in that other video but um this guy he's maybe i don't know maybe 15 inches if that probably a pound or less right around there but to do the quick and easy way you start with this cut right here that i just did and then uh just kind of this part here is the trickiest part you do the scoop that's what i call that because you kind of get down in and scoop it out and then there's a bone right here that's kind of hard to get around and you just kind of go around it like that and these you want the knife to be in there a little farther when you're doing it than you would on say like a a crappie or something you know when I'm when I'm doing a crappie or a panfish I just barely have this knife in here when I'm doing this initial cut this you want to get all the way down to the spine all the way in do the scoop and then come around and then because there's it's they don't have that big long fin so it's harder to follow the whole thing so I like to be nice and up against it and then at this point it's pretty much like filleting anything else just keep your knife at that perfect angle go along the spine like so using that curve of the blade poke it through right about there and just work it down whoops okay so once you get to that point what I'll do we'll come back up like so make sure we get all of this in here just by kind of keeping it down and like that. But what we want to do is stay out of the guts. These little catfish, when I say they'll eat just about anything, they'll eat just about anything. That's no, no exaggeration. And their guts are just super nasty. So I like to stay out of them. There's not enough belly. Well, you could harvest that belly meat if you wanted to, but to me, it's just not worth it. I don't think it tastes as good. The fillets are, are what I do on these little guys. If it was a flathead, I might try because I do like the flathead belly meat, but I just broke that so he'd lay flat. I do like the flathead belly meat, but the channel cats, eh, it's not, not my favorite. I guess I'd rather eat it than starve, but anyway. So make our cut back here. Now the head is pretty hard. If you hit get in the wrong spot, it won't work. So you gotta find there it is. That's where we were trying to hit, right there. It'll start to go through here and then stop because it kind of comes out a little bit. But yeah, same deal. Get down like that, do your scoop. And then this little piece kind of sticks out. Go around there like so. Get down on the spine. Come back up, and then we'll go 
You want to come out right about there. Knife angled down and just Whoops. And we just get him like that and just slice down until we see the ribs and then go over the ribs and stay out of the guts. And when I get to the end of the ribs, I just poke it through like that. And that'll keep you out of the guts, keep it from making too big of a mess. And you got two nice little fillets there. And then to get the skin off, it's just like everything else. Use the long knife if you can, otherwise work with what you got. Yeah, so here's our two fillets we're left with at the end. And I mean, you know, there's not a ton of meat on there, but there's enough. You can get a, get a little, little fish and chip out of that or, or a little po' boy or whatever. It'd fry up just as good as anything else. So uh, to get the skin off, all I do is I lay it skin side down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove that right there. I didn't quite get it. There. So now, just like anything else, I just uh, lay her down like, lay her down flat. I'm trying to avoid that. I don't know what that is, but I have a... Uh, have an idea of what it is. In fact, we're just gonna do that. Okay. All right, so. I'm out of paper towels. Normally I use a gazillion paper towels cleaning fish, but I had to go ahead and get this done. So anyway, once you're at that point, we'll just, uh, you know, do the old spoon trick. And like I said, on catfish, they do have some red meat. A small one like this isn't that bad, but still try to get the, as much of it off with the skin as I can. So that's, that's what I did there. And then we'll just go get that little piece of skin off. Okay. This little bit right here at the end. All right. And then we'll just take this little piece out right here. So there's our first fillet. All right, so there's our other piece. Got our red meat out. We'll see you in the kitchen. We're just gonna do a simple pan fry today. Um, as always, start by just getting your, your, your chunks, your meat. Um, just get it patted dry. And don't have to be perfect, but just get some of that excess moisture off of it. And like I said, we're keeping it stupid simple today. Just uh, gonna throw it, pan fry it. So, next thing you want to do, get you a bag, and uh, today we're going to use some of this, one of my favorites. And we're just going to, uh, get some in that bag there. And it's kind of a lot, but it'll be all right. And uh, throw all our fish in there. Give that a good uh, mix. Make sure they all get hot sauce all over them. All right, so that's looking pretty good there. Okay. 
Okay, so now we got the same plate here that we used. I'm gonna take some of my fry stuff. I'm pretty sure this is Louisiana brand fish fry, but I couldn't swear by it. I'm just gonna get some of that on the plate. Maybe, ew, a little chunk of old fish in there. Um, you can reuse your fry batter, but always store it in the freezer, and that right there is the reason why. So, if you got leftover fish fry batter, like the dry powder, keep it in the freezer, because you never know, there might be little fish chunks in it, and as long as it's in the freezer, they won't like stink or go bad, and you can still use the batter. So anyway, take your hot sauce covered fish pieces, roll them all up in there like so. Oh yeah. Trying my best not to make a mess, but hey, if it happens, it happens. We'll just clean it up. Okay, so now that that's done, got to get some oil in our cast here. I'd say probably do like, mm, that's probably too much. It's about, or maybe not, I don't know. It's about maybe a quarter inch deep. That's probably about right. And this is just the old Members Mark canola oil, nothing special. I'd say we probably want this to be about 350 if you don't, like me, just err on the side of caution. I know that it's going to take a little while longer to heat the oil up, but it'll keep it from getting, getting overheated. You really don't want that for multiple reasons. So anyway, we're gonna, I'm going to let that get hot and we'll see you in a few minutes. Alright guys, here's the test if you don't have a thermometer. I just got a little bit of the the batter here let's see all right so yeah that's probably good enough we're gonna go ahead and put our fish in and when you do this you want to do one piece at a time here Pan fry is almost like a deep fry at this point. That's because I use too much oil. That's what'll happen. So uh, yeah, this technically is maybe even not a pan fry, but it's a fry nonetheless. All right, these are. Uh, oh yeah, we're gonna go ahead and flip them just so they get the bottom side in. They're starting to look look right. They're crisping up on the outside and turning. Oh, that one looks even better. Could maybe do just a touch more heat, but like I said, it's better to err on the side of caution with the heat.
All right, guys, so that is the finished product. I'm gonna let it cool off for a minute and then, uh, then we'll do a taste test. All right, guys, this is my wife. She's going to be our taste tester today. So let's see what she thinks. All right, try this one. It's got a good crispy bit. It's good. What was good about it? The crunchy bit. <laughs> and it's got like a good spice to it. It like kind of falls apart in your mouth. But it's not too spicy. It's good. I dip this in ranch. Well, there you have it, guys. The uh, Valentina catfish was a hit. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.